This lecture is on simplifying complex fractions with negative exponents. Our first example here is a raised to the negative third plus b raised to the negative first divided by a to the negative second. So the way that I like to do these is to rewrite each of our terms. So a raised to the negative third is the same as one over a cubed plus b to the negative first is the same as one over b. And a to the negative second is the same as one over a squared. And so now it's just like we were doing before. We want to find the, the LCD and multiply by it. So I have an a cubed. And the a squared is going to be taken care of by the a cubed. So we don't need anything because of that, but we do need a b. So a cubed b is my LCD. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a cubed b. So we'll have 1 over a cubed times a cubed b plus 1 over b times a cubed b. All of that over 1 over a squared times a cubed b. So now when I multiply 1 over a cubed by a cubed b, the a cubes cancel and we're left with b plus when we multiply 1 over b by a cubed b, the b's cancel, so we're left with a cubed. And when we multiply 1 over a squared by a cubed b, two of these a's cancel, but we're left with one, so we have a b. And we can't cancel anything here because on the top we're separated by addition. And the only time you can cancel things if it's as if it's all multiplication. There is another way that you can do this, um, and if you're more comfortable with this next method, you can go ahead and use it if you would like. So the other thing that you can do is um, look at your variables and pick out the one with a larger number. So this is a negative 3, and the 3 is bigger than this, 2, so we're going to multiply by a cubed. And then this is the only b we have, so we're just going to do b to the first. So we come to the same conclusion. We're multiplying by a cubed b on both the top and the bottom. And so we would have a to the negative third times a cubed b plus b to the negative first times a cubed b divided by a to the negative second times a cubed b. And when you are multiplying, you add exponents. And so a to the negative third plus times a to the third, to the positive third. When we add those negative three and positive three, we get zero. And anything to the zero power is one. So they basically cancel each other out, and we'll just be left with this b. Plus, same thing's going to happen here. We have b to the negative first and b to the positive first. So those basically cancel each other out, and we're left with a cubed. And down here, we have a to the negative second times a cubed. Adding the exponents, we get a to the first. So that's a, and then b. So again, either way is fine with me. You just pick the one that you're more comfortable with. In our next problem here, 3x to the negative first plus 3y to the negative first over 4x to the negative second minus 9y to the negative second. So in the way that I like to do it, so this 3 is not being raised to the negative first power, only the x is. So the 3 is going to stay in the numerator. So it's going to be 3 over x plus same thing happens here. So that would be 3 over y. And same with this next term. The 4 stays on the top, and the x squared goes on the bottom. Minus, again, 9 stays on top, and the y squared goes on the bottom. And the LCD, so we have an x, but down here we have an x squared, so we need x squared. And we have a y, but down here we have a y squared, so we'll take the y squared. So we're going to multiply everything by x squared, y squared. We have 3 over x times x squared, y squared, plus 3 over y times x squared, y squared. 
over 4 over x squared times x squared y squared minus 9 over y squared times x squared y squared. And when I multiply 3 over x by x squared y squared, the x, this x cancels with one of these x's. So we'll have 3xy squared plus 3. And here, this y cancels with one of these y's. So we have x squared y. And 4 over x squared, the x squareds will cancel, giving us 4y squared minus 9. And here, oops, this is supposed to be y squared, sorry. The y squared cancels with this y squared, and we're left with 9x squared. So now on the top, we can factor out a 3xy. And when we do that, we'll be left with y plus x. And on the bottom, this is the difference of two perfect squares. So it's going to factor as 2y plus 3 times 2y minus 3. And this did not help us be able to cancel anything new, but you should always factor everything just to double check. And you could use the other method for this one as well if you wanted to. So 3x to the negative first plus 3y to the negative first over 4x to the negative second plus, whoops, sorry, minus 9 y to the negative second. So again, um, x to the negative second and y to the negative second, those are the biggest. So we're going to multiply by x squared, y squared. Three x to the negative first times x squared, y squared, plus three y to the negative first times x squared, y squared. And 4x to the negative second times x squared y squared minus 9y to the negative second times x squared y squared. And now we need to do that multiplication. So we'll have 3 and then x to the negative first times x squared is x. And then we have the y squared plus 3. And then we have the x squared. And then y to the negative first times y to the second is y. And on the bottom, we have 4. And x to the negative second times x squared, those basically cancel each other out. And so we'll have 4y squared minus 9. And again, these y's basically cancel each other out, so we'll be left with 9x squared. On the top, we factor out our 3xy. And we'll be left with y plus x. And then on the bottom, we can factor the difference of two perfect squares as 2y plus 3x times 2y minus 3x. So again, it doesn't matter to me which one of these two methods you use. Um, either one is just fine. Use whichever one you're more comfortable with. And that's it for this part. I hope you're having a great week, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.